Welcome to the Gliding Federation of Australia's daily inspection video series. In this video, we walk through the inspection of the cockpit. The daily inspection begins before you take the glider out of the hangar. A glider may become unairworthy for many reasons before you have even begun to inspect it. So our first task of the DI is to ensure that it could be flown today. To do that, we first locate the maintenance release of the glider. Inside the cover, you first check that you have the right maintenance release for the glider you're inspecting. That today's date is between the start and end date and that it has been signed out as being able to fly. Unless this is the assessment flight following the annual inspection, the return to service flight report should be ticked and signed too. Next, we check if there is any required maintenance due before flying can commence by checking the sections at the front of the release and comparing them against today's date and current number of hours for the glider. Often, the hours are recorded in the maintenance release, but some clubs will have alternative means of tracking the time, so be sure to know what your aircraft is using. Finally, we check to make sure that there are no major defects that would prevent the aircraft from flying. Everything is clear, so time to push the glider out of the hangar. At this point, though not an official part of the daily inspection, most people will wash the glider. This serves two purposes. Firstly, it removes dust and leftover junk from previous flying. And secondly, it gives you a chance to look over the aircraft in detail as you are washing it, looking for those fine marks like cracks or chips. With the paperwork checks done and the glider clean and ready for detailed inspection, we now start at the cockpit. Before we look inside, we check the canopy for issues. Are there cracks in the canopy that are starting to propagate? Have the rails around the clear view window cracked or lost any screws? Does the clear view window open and close? Open the canopy up and check that the stop cable is functioning and will detach in the case of needing to bail out and that the hinges are both safe and will hold the canopy onto the glider. Next, we check that the wings are properly secured to the glider. There are many different styles for wing pins and making sure that they are secure so please ensure you look at the manual for the glider you are currently inspecting. Large band gliders, like two-seaters, often also have drag pins, so ensure that they are fitted and secure. While we are here, for gliders that do not have automatic control coupling, check that they are still in safety. Even if the aircraft flew yesterday, there's no guarantee that someone hasn't been doing some overnight maintenance and left them uncoupled. Learning to feel for correct connection is an important part of being a daily inspector, as often the glider manufacturers have not left much room for a proper visual inspection. A torch and mirror are often useful here. Many gliders also have their batteries installed on the parcel shelf or in the wing roots, so let's check those too. Ensure that you have fully charged batteries. If not already fitted, put them in now, secure them and plug in the leads. Check that the safety is in place, that the leads aren't coming apart, and that the fuse is OK. With the battery in place, we can quickly check the instruments. Turn the master switch on and check all batteries are providing power. Check that the electrical items on the instrument panel are responding. Some may have a separate on switch. If you have a radio fitted, now would be a good time to do a quick radio check. Moving on to the belts, we first check for condition. Have they frayed? Is the stitching coming apart? Do they connect up and lock into position properly? Also check they are correctly fitted in the glider. Make sure that you have the appropriate cushions for the glider and items like headrests are in good condition. In the event of a heavy landing or worse, headrests are a very important safety item. Due to the design of some glider canopies, they have been known to get burnt badly. Under the cushions are the seatbacks, which are often movable. Ensure that these are still safe, particularly around the fuselage mounts. Accidents have been attributed to seatbacks moving early in the launch because they were not properly secured. The seat band too is checked to ensure safety. In older gliders with open frames, it is possible that items have fallen out of pockets and ended up under the seat where they could easily jam the controls. Again, a torch and mirror should be used to check these hard to see places. Finally, identify where the ballast is fitted in the glider and ensure the fittings are safe and that any ballast is removed. 
Daily inspections have two checks of the controls. This check in the cockpit ensures that we don't have any interference issues. Controls should be checked to ensure that they move to the full extent of their respective travel and that there is no binding in the control circuits. Firstly, the stick. Then the air brakes. A stretch for the rudders. And for gliders fitted with them, that the flaps move to all positions of travel. Most gliders have a boot around the control column. Over time, these become worn and develop holes. Make sure that everything is still in good condition and that items cannot fall through into the control mechanisms. Rudder cables are checked as much as possible for signs of wear. Typically you'll find this around the S-Bend and also on any crimps. Broken strands in the cable are a sign of impending failure. Be careful checking these as small strands can jab you. It's best to use a cloth to check for broken cables. The tow release and rudder pedal cables should also be checked to make sure they operate correctly. If a rope with rings is available, do your release check now, though many clubs will do them once out on the flight line. Testing the wheel brake will require two people. A light push while the other activates the brakes will be a sufficient test. Instrument checks make sure that everything is still in working order. While the accuracy is not checked during the daily inspection, we make sure that they still have basic operation. It is not unknown to have insects, like wasps and bees, make a home in the pedo tubes overnight, and water to get into the TE or static ports due to storms, or the cleaning of the glider you did earlier. Check the electrical and mechanical instruments, ensuring that there is no broken glass and they are still secure in the panel. The altimeter can be set to airfield height above sea level. And G meters reset where fitted. Checking the ASI is a two person job. While one is watching the instrument, the other gives a light puff in the pedo. The needle should just move. If you need anything more than a light puff, something is likely obstructing the pedo or the tubing has come apart, so a call to your local annual inspector will be in order. While not essential to flight safety, ensuring that the Vario's work is important to our goal of soaring. Like the ASI, this is a two-person check. While one watches the instrument, the other blows across the total energy probe's opening. It is important that you blow across the opening and not directly into it. The Vario is a very sensitive instrument and strong gusts from a direct puff will be enough to permanently damage it. Now that the cockpit inspection is complete, you can move to the other areas of the aircraft. In the other videos in this series, we walk through the wings and fuselage inspections.